Welcome to this joint webinar between Eggplant and Practitest. My name is Gareth Smith and I'll be joined later on by Joel from Practitest. Today we're going to cover off managing intelligent test automation and we'll show you how Eggplant and Practitest together gives you the best of both worlds. So if we think about the challenges of delivering quality software, we can narrow it down to four different elements. One is around the cost and speed. As organizations move towards Agile and DevOps, that means faster release cycles, but less time for testing. So the focus of what do we test needs to be addressed to make sure that we're optimizing all our resources to deliver higher quality software. So things like continuous intelligent test automation is key. Then we talk about quality. Quality's moved away from simply does it work to how does it deliver a positive user experience? We need that positive user experience to differentiate ourselves from our competitors. So testing the actual customer experience is key to make sure that we do that. Then there's technology fragmentation. We're moving away from delivering on one platform, maybe two platforms, to a whole range of different types of services and technologies but also we consume those different levels of technologies. So we have to be able to make sure we can include those in our world. And finally, there's a gap between the dev and the ops worlds. So we can build our product and we can make that available and we pass that on to the ops team to make sure it's available and running to customers. But very often the insights from the ops team are not passed back into development. So we don't know which parts of the product are used most often, which parts are more valuable and which parts are the areas that we should focus on. We address those problems at Eggplant through our customer experience optimization. We deliver this through two suites. We have the digital automation intelligence suite and the customer experience insight suite. Digital automation intelligence is all about test automation and we connect to any system, test that through any level of technology you need and with any level of automation, automating more than simply executing of those tests. We also deliver the insights from those tests and the results of those tests in terms of the business. On the right hand side, our customer experience insights is all about making sure that the system or the app or the product you have out in the wild is operating as it should but more importantly, when you combine both these suites together, we could draw the user and the business insights from that system in use back into the development world. So we can work out which user journeys, which tests, which paths are more important for the particular set of users or for the particular set of users that we actually want to focus on because these may be driving our business objectives higher than different cohorts, for example. And we do all this through a set of unified tooling to bring in both development as well as business users into this world. So in a summary, how does the digital automation intelligence suite work? Well, if I start at the top, you can see that we have our defined test cases. This is where folks have a explicit set of tests and areas that they need to cover. In addition to this, we have technology where we can automatically generate test cases. So we have a model based approach and AI and machine learning algorithms that will automatically create and select the next test to run in an exploratory use case. So both of these combined operate using any level or any combination of object image or API testing. And then the results of those tests are passed into a, a uniform visualization that tie together both business and technical insights. So as you can see here, the management of the test cases, this is where we talk to practice test, and you'll see later on how you can combine, uh, manage, organize, um, and prioritize your test cases in the practice test system. So now I have my test cases defined, we can execute those and test the full customer experience. So functional testing is more than testing an API to make sure that the number returned is what we expect. We can also look at it to make sure that it actually appears and is comprehensible by the actual user. So is the, does the data appear on the screen? Is it accurate? Um, can it be read? And if not, then is this because there's a particular issue with a platform, with a particular browser, or particular orientation of a device. 
Then we look at localization. So if I change the language, is it still visible on the screen? Does the text still fit within the size of the button that I've allocated it? Performance testing is next. This allows us to make sure that our user interfaces and, and APIs are responsive continuously. And finally, usability testing. In addition to functional testing, this is making sure that the user can comprehend the information that is shown on the screen. Is the text actually readable or is the contrast between the background and the foreground too small such that it makes it very difficult to read? Do the objects move just before I click on them? So all these factors deliver a negative customer experience if not carefully managed. So in addition to the test cases or regression packs I may have in my test case management system, we can also automatically generate test cases. You can see this happening on the right hand side. We have a model that represents an application or a website or a system under tests of some form. And then we have algorithms that sit underneath that that define what to do next. Bug hunting will identify all the common attributes that we've seen behind failed tests. And as we move through the model, we'll focus the flow to give us the better chance of identifying further defects of similar types. Coverage analysis utilizes a number of configurable coverage models that allow us to define how much of the scope, or the full scope of the application we want to test, and we can hit targets to make sure we have a certain amount of coverage within a certain amount of test runs. The real user journeys allow us to skew both of those to focus really only on areas that are really mostly used by users in production. So the areas of the model that are least frequently used will have less bias as we run through the exploratory use cases. And so we can connect to any environment through these technologies and we can connect to these remotely. So we have any device type operating system and hardware and we can provide these through a sharing environment such that these devices can be connected to remotely, reducing the uh, admin overhead, but also allows our manual testers to use these remote devices that could be uh, housed in a particular area. So here's an example of us remotely connecting to an Android tablet and an Apple iPhone. In the center, you can see a model of the application we're going to test. And the key point here is we're reusing the test assets across those different platforms. So we're going to see an exploratory set of test cases being generated in this example. But you can also see that at the top of the model, we have device selection. So we've actually given the selection of the device up to the exploratory engine to choose where to go next. So not just which part of the application I'm going to test, but also which platform I'm going to test it on. So if we have less or more coverage or less or more bugs on different platforms, that will influence which platform we focus on. So that's an overview of Eggplant. And I'd now like to hand over to Joel to talk about the practice test details and give you a demonstration of both systems running. So, um, guys, this is Joel from the practice team. And let's actually take you over a practice test overview so that you can learn a little bit more about the system. So, first of all, um, practice is an ALM solution. ALM stands for Application Lifecycle Management. And that basically means that we are covering within Practitest the complete end-to-end -end QA and testing functionality. We have modules for dashboards, as you can see here, and we have modules for requirements management. We have a test repository, a module to manage your test executions, and even a bug tracking system. Having said that, we can also integrate with a bunch of other systems. So if you have Jira or Pyrrhal Tracker or any of the other bug tracking or ticketing systems, then we will also be able to seamlessly integrate um, your processes. Now, the idea of practice, it's not only to serve as a testing platform, but also to provide you with complete visibility into what's happening within your testing process, as well as with the necessary control over your test cases so that you can always be um, sure that you're making the correct operations and getting all the visibility out of the system. Um, in practice, you can obviously manage both your manual as well as your automated test cases and your execution cycles. You can manage your projects based on whatever you want, being those releases, cycles, sprints, whatever you're calling them, builds, um, any nomenclature, nomenclature that you may have, you can actually apply it within practice, and it's gonna be very easy to manage 
all of your results, compare the different runs, and basically generate all the information that you may want to get out of your testing process. Um, within practice, if we talk for a second on our manual test cases, we support both scripted test cases as well as exploratory or session-based testing. And we do allow you to capture all your manual as well as your automatic testing results within one tool. So that's what makes it special. And as I mentioned before, one of the biggest focuses of practice is it's not only to manage your process or to control it, but also to provide as much insight into what's happening in the system. And for that, we have multiple um, systems for that, starting from built-in graphs that you can customize all the way to very advanced reports that will allow you to take a look into all your information and help your stakeholders make those correct decisions. And it's, everything is actually very, very customizable. Now, what you're here to see, it's basically not only practice test or eggplant, but how we actually work together within the system. And the best way to do this is uh, with a live demo. Everyone loves the demo. So let's go ahead and let's take a look into a live demo. Um, just one second. If I switch over here, what I have is a practice project one that we already configured. And again, as you see, you have all the modules that I mentioned before. If I go over to our test library module, we already configured this project to work with, um, the, with the eggplant integration. And if I go into one of my test cases in here, then uh, because we selected this as an eggplant automatic test cases, then practice will automatically add a couple of files, uh, sorry, fields, uh, that will help you define uh, the test and the script and everything there. And don't worry, everything is fully explained as part of our help documentation. Now I already took this test in here and I created a test set that you can see here. Uh, it's important to mention that in parallel, we're already running eggplant in egg drive mode. And uh, we also have running the eggplant adapter for practice test that is running on the back on the background, uh, configured to be listening uh, to practice test so that uh, the request to execute the test will come from practice test, will be executed via the adapter on the um, eggplant in egg drive mode and report the results back into practice test. It sounds complex, but it's actually very simple. I have here the test that I already had created, I showed you before, it's mapped to your eggplant test case, and now you can just execute it here. You can see that we're waiting for the run. If we go behind the scenes, let's see how it looks. You see here that we're basically uh, waiting for the results. Now eggplant is running, um, and it already reported back the results into practice tests from the server. Let's come back in here. It's a very simple test case. So if we refresh the page in here, we will be able to see the run in here. Cool, it actually found something, it failed. If I want to see the information within the run, then I press here on my run uh, in here. I can see the output that came directly from eggplant, log files that I told my test to upload, as well as the screen that was taken from the test so that you can make those decisions and see whatever happened in there. Okay, and obviously you can have as many test cases as you have and execute them based on the order that you need to execute your test cases. Okay, um, so in summary, the whole idea of the integration is to allow you to manage all your testing efforts under one roof. We want you to be able to basically um, control everything that is happening there. You can generate uh, your eggplant test, case, uh, test sets. You can trigger them from within practice test. Uh, and again, capture that functionality. You can um, mix between your manual test cases, your automatic test case, obviously, and generate and share all of your online metrics and graphs with every one of your stakeholders. The whole idea behind everything in here is to create an end-to-end -end seamless view of all of your testing efforts and to allow you to provide uh, visibility and control over your complete process. Now, the eggplant uh, integration with practice is already available. If you want to start working with it, don't, again, don't wait. You can contact either the guys from Eggplant or ourselves within practice. You have here our contact information and we'll be more than happy to assist you in any way you need.